And that's how I ended up with the two best waifus in the entire world. Don't get so full of yourself. Just because you have sexy and useful waifus in your harem, you'll, you'll never have this amazing power. myself full of myself dude do you have any clue what i've gone through all the times i've died trying to figure out the right happy ending as in, and it hasn't always been that great either i left rem in a coma because i made the wrong choice somewhere and i couldn't even use return by death to help her out <laughs> Ha! <laughs> That's nothing. I was stuck in a death game where you only got one chance to survive. Just one. I watched so many good people killed by the programs of a madman. And I was rejected by everyone because I was a beta player. A beater. The Black Swordsman. I don't think that makes you the real Black Swordsman. My angstiness and harem says it does! Kirito, can you even talk on this subject? I mean, have you even died at all in your story? One of my waifus was always there to bring me back. And there was this one time I pulled some programmer BS and saved my fairy daughter. Arr, give it a rest already! Nobody cares about your story anymore, Kirito! And with all the isekai manga and anime flooding the market, no one's impressed by all your deaths either, Subaru! Don't you get it, though? Everything that I've gone through... AMATEURS! I lost every waifu but one to death or to duty. I died countless thousands of times fighting eldritch abominations, gods, the undead, dragons, dragon trees, humanoid dragon trees. But in the end, it was worth it because I married a goddess. And none of you can beat that. Wanna bet? <laughs> So, I'm guessing you're going to tell us your story now? You're darn tootin' right! There have been so many isekai stories out there that I risk sounding like a second-rate blunt protagonist by telling mine. But truth be told, this is a very different story from anything you've ever heard before. How? Why? Well, for one, it's my story. And I married a frickin' goddess after dying more times than Subaru ever has could ever dream of dying, and killing more gods and champions than Kirito could ever shake a stick at. And I wasn't born incredibly intelligent and skilled like Rudeus. I didn't have good luck and friends like Kazuma, even though he despises them for crying out loud. I would have taken his most unhelpful allies just to have some friends in the lands between. And I had no epic items or an undead kingdom at my back to save me like Ainz had. Nope, I was reborn in the body of a nobody and called by grace to wage a one-man war against the entire world world and its pantheon of gods. But when I recall, I see it true. On a night of wintry fog. The rune of death was stolen. And the demigods began to fall. Starting with Godwin the Golden.
Queen Marika was driven to the brink. The shattering ensued a war that wrought only darkness. The Elden Ring was broken. But by whom? And why? But wait, now I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. L let's start at the beginning. It all began when I got stood up for a blind date. Yeah, it kind of figures, really. That's on me. But as I was finally coming around to accepting the fact that I wasn't going to meet the exiled African princess named Alejandra Valdez, I saw a mugging happening in the opening to a lovely lady, and I intervened. But I got stabbed in the process, and as I stumbled down to the middle of the road, I got hit by a truck, and the vending machine tied to the back of said truck rolled off and flattened me, followed up immediately by another truck crashing into me and going, Going kaboom! After that horrifying experience, of which I felt every excruciating moment, I wasn't even met by some hot goddess, or any god for that matter, as I crossed over to the other side. Instead, I was shown a gorgeous cinematic opening? About a past I barely understood as I was stuffed into this new body. Granted, I did get some say in how this body looks, but some disembodied voices just kept whispering to me the entire time that I shouldn't get attached to it because I was in for a world of hurt, and oh boy, was I ever. I woke up in these stormy ruins, and then got jumped by a monster, died, woke up in a cave, died some more, got out of the cave, and then was mocked for being eternally single. Thanks, dude. And so, my new life of misery began. After getting killed and smacked around by golden knights and horrible monstrosities, though, I met... her. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Forgive mine intrusion tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder? before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers. She gave me a bell to summon spirits and a whistle to call forth faithful torrent, my new mountain steed. She was so ethereal, so beautiful, and who knew what she could do with those extra hands? I had to find her again, so I followed the flimsy guidance of grace and eventually made my way up a great climb into a craggy, ruinous remains of Stormvale Castle. There I had to battle Godric the Grafted, the first of my goddess's many relatives, whom I would have to murder. Well...
tokens. Lend me thy strength. Yeah, along the way, I did meet other incredible women, uh, one of which was a real muscle mama, and oh boy, do I love me some muscle mamas. Oh yeah. However, Nephilim was going through a lot at the time, and whatever relationship we might have had was overshadowed by her adopted father, but I'll get to that bastard later. Anyway, it was great meeting someone else who was at least somewhat sympathetic towards me and was willing to help me fight and was willing to get along and be on my side other than just these ghostly wolves I had for companions who only came out when I needed to kill someone. And when I think about it, Nephilim was only really there for me when I had to kill other people as well. This is a really awkward relationship now that I reflect on it. Anyway, together Nephilim and I killed the Lord of Stormville and brought anarchy to the region of Limgrave. But before I fully understood what I was doing, I was on a quest to discover who this witch was and woo a goddess. I just had to get through several thousand more deaths. <laughs> But that is a story that we shall have after another round of drinks! Come on! Hi there everyone, Lars here from Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel. By novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And playing through Elden Ring and accumulating way too much game footage, I figured that I'd put it all to good use before deleting it and making room for the next game that I'll struggle to finish. I also thought it'd be fun to try out a new story here on the channel and poke some fun at Isekai in the process. However, there is a whole story here to tell, but these videos require way more editing than usual and I wanted to make sure that it was worth your while and mine to keep going with the insanely grueling quest to marry the objectively best waifu in Elden Ring. So if you want to see where this goes, then please let me know in the comments. And if you found this little chapter enjoyable and like my zany style, then might I suggest for your enjoyment reading my book, The Monarch Mercenaries, a tale about space pirates who are out for revenge and told in a manner so wild and so bold, no publisher would ever take up this book. But don't let that turn you off to its wild shenanigans. It has something for everyone, except romance. There's hardly any romance in the book. So if you're looking for romance, you can either then read my book, Notice Me, Send Pie, or you can encourage me to do the next chapter in That Time I Married a Goddess. Looking forward to reading your comments, and until the next video, y'all, juice.